All right, Shalom. Want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash. Want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching His word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I just want to do a uh, a quick take on um, uh, a response. You know, it's going to be quick and short. I was watching Elder Apostle Gabar's page, and um. He did the show on um on Captain Capitano Tazariak, all right? And um, you know, he's gone. And uh I was just having this discussion with someone and uh even they can see it and understand that when the scriptures talk about a woman being a virgin and when she you know, gets to the point of, of uh, she blooms as a flower, okay? She gets over her flower. It's talking about her being an actual woman, all right? And it's clear as day, uh, you know, you have, matter of fact, let me read and I'll bring some examples out. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and 32. But I would have you without carefulness, he that is unmarried care for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Right. So Paul is talking about a man um, that that is of the Lord, believes in the Lord, follows the Lord, is a servant of the Lord, but he is unmarried. And when he's unmarried, he careth for the things of the Lord. All right. And how he may please the Lord, because why? He's his faith is strong. You know, he's by himself. But it says verse 33. But he that is married care for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. So. When he when you marry and you have a woman, the tendency of of you know of you serving the Lord, it kind of weakens you. Not that you weaken the Lord, but it weakens you. Because when you by yourself, you know, all you care about is pleasing Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. But when you with a woman, you know, you have to care about pleasing her, you know, what what she wants, you know, and, and what she likes. And basically you're sharing your life with a person. When you're not sharing your life with a person and you is just you and I with the Lord, you're strong. You're very strong. But when you're with a woman, you're sharing your life and it makes you just a tad weaker, you know? All right. So I hope you have understand and understand, right? So it says, verse 34, uh, there is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. Okay. So you're a married woman and a woman that's unmarried. Basically, they haven't um, lost her virginity yet. So it says the unmarried woman care for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married care for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. So it goes the same thing, same, same way for a woman. Now, these are women who serve and believe in the Lord. So if you have a, a woman that is married, she's going to care for the things of of the world, which is to please her husband. How can I make him happy? Cook, clean, you know, um, doing this. How can I, you know, I'm a babe. I'm a, uh, you know, I'm a, be, you know, clean. Whatever it takes, all right, for a woman to uh, please her husband. She's going to care for those things because she wants her husband to be happy. All right. So same thing. Uh, well, the opposite for a virgin, a woman that is unmarried, she's going to care about, uh, she's going to be Excuse me. She's going to be holy and care about the things that pleases the Lord because she's by herself. She don't have that distraction. She don't have to cook a meal for a man and um, make sure that he's good and do these things and this and that. She's just worried about, you know, her doing things that is right in the eyes of the Lord. But eventually that version is going to eventually become a married woman. Because if she is doing things right in the Lord, the Lord is going to guide her to her husband so that her husband can be in hedge. All right. At the end of the day, you know, people get emotional when it comes to this scripture. First Corinthians seven and thirty six, when it says a woman passing a flower of her age, you get very emotional. But you got to understand, listen, the Lord created women for one purpose. All right. Let me say you even created them for many purposes, because I know people love to argue. But but let's let's be honest here. The Heavenly Father created a woman to serve. Now, today, 2020 here in America, Babylon, the Greek, you know, you can as a man, a woman, you can come up with all these ideas 
and all these ways and different ideas on how you think that your purpose is and what you need to do and what you can do. But you're not taking away or stopping the purpose in which the Lord created you for. And that's what a lot of people don't put themselves in that type of shoe. You don't put yourself into the Bible's um, way and how to think. You don't use the Bible. And let me. Ah. You don't think that the Lord. You think that the Lord, you know, is a lot is allowing you to have free will. The Most High created woman to serve man. That's why He created Eve for Adam, okay, and gave Eve unto Adam to be what a servant. All right. So the same thing as it goes today. The main thing of a woman, her purpose is to serve. So you're going to be what? Up under your father when you're born. And when you get of age, you're going to be up under your husband. As it's supposed to be. Alright? Uh, he that got ears to hear, let him hear. Alright, so let's get to 35. It says, um, And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may uh, cast a snare upon you. Now let's listen to this, man. It says, and this I speak for your own profit, all right, so that you can profit off this. The Apostle Paul is giving his humble opinion, his humble, uh, his, his humble opinion, which his opinions become commandments, okay, because he, he was uh, uh, that man of the Lord that the Lord used, okay, and it says for your own profit, it's for your gain, right? So that you don't be shaky in your mind or believing that you're going off and doing something wicked. He's making it clear. Okay. He's making it clear. The Lord said in a uh, precept, he said, uh, the Lord is not the author of confusion. So Paul is making it clear. It says, and this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, which means a trap, but for your own. But for that which is comely, which means beautiful. So, but for that which is comely, beautiful, and that ye may obtain, up, ye may obtain upon the Lord without distractions. So you don't need no distractions. You don't need Satan causing confusion for you. Verse 36. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin... If she pass the flower of her age and needs so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not, let them marry. All right, now, here it is. Paul said, but if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin. Now, someone asked, they said, well, in the argument sake, how you know that virgin wasn't about 25 years old? She could have been a woman that just never had sex with a man and and she could have been 25, you know? Okay, if that's the case, if she was 25, then think about it. Why did Paul say, but if a man think that he behaved himself uncomely, if a woman is 25 years old and a man is 40 years old, why would he feel uncomfortable to deal with a woman that is 25? That wouldn't even make sense. He would just go and marry her if she wasn't, um, you know, she was a virgin, Okay. So what are we talking here? We're talking the virgin, all right, which I'm going to go into the word, okay, which is talking about a woman around the age of 12, 13, 14, okay, when the age when a woman starts to receive her period from month to month. So it says, but if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age... And need so required, let him do what he will. He sinneth not, let them marry. Okay? So he's not going off if a woman is uh, over her flower. All right? This is a uh, virgin. Strong's G 3933. Parthenos. Parthenos. A virgin, a marriageable maiden, a woman who has never had sexual intercourse with a man, one's marriageable daughter.
one who has never had intercourse with with women. All right, they're trying to say like a man, right, being a virgin, but we're talking about a woman being a virgin. All right, so you get the picture. Now let's go down. Um, it says toward a virgin if she passed the flower of her age. Now let's look up this flower because the point is, what is flower? Why would Paul have to say this? All right, why would Paul have to say if a woman's passed her flower? It says that he, let me read again. Let's read it. It says, but if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely, because a man may think, damn, she younger than me, man. She real young. Damn, should I fuck with her? Now, we're talking about, what, 3,000 years ago? 2,000 plus some years ago? All right? Of course, not today. In this society, you'll go to jail. And none of us brothers out here... Uh, are doing such a thing as that because if we was Esau would lock us up man all right we're just stating the fact of what's written in the scriptures this is scripture you know you have to take your mind outside of this western world mentality inside this western world mentality and put your mind back in the age of which these scriptures were written in in the time we lived in okay and guess what when the lord yahweh shall come back when he cracked those clouds, we're going back to these times. They're going to go back to the our our ancient Hebrew customs. All right, so it says, um, but if any man think that he behaved himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she passed the flower of her age and need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not, let them marry. So now the flower of the age, right? Now flower, it says, um, Strong's G 5230, Huperakmas, Huperakmas. It says beyond the bloom or prime of life, overripe, plump, and ripe, and so in a greater danger of defilement of a virgin. Exactly. Because once a woman is past her flower, she's receiving her period every month. It's a it's a it's a possibility that she can be defiled. You know, she could actually be likened. That we, now, take we 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 talk we we're back in the age of uh, two thousand years ago, man. Okay, that's where we at right now. That's where where our minds are visualizing. Okay. If this woman, which was a virgin, and she liked it, this fellow, and this fellow liked it, her, but they probably wasn't betrothed because their parents probably wasn't with it. But guess what? For any, let's say, okay, she liked this guy, this guy liked her. Now she's past the flower of her age, okay, and he wanted to be with her. She wanted to be with him. But just say another guy come out of nowhere and takes this woman rape this woman because the bible does teach us that take really takes her by force and make her of his now she's been defiled she can't be with the guy who she liked the guy who she liked can't be with her because she belongs to another man now so she's been defiled it says overripe plump and ripe and so in a greater danger of defilement she could even be taken captive and be defiled by another nation, by him. Okay? Delilah was the Salakia, I meant to say Dinah, not Delilah. Uh basically Shikam, you know, Prince of well, Shikam was a prince in Ham, and he took and defiled Dinah, not Delilah. I want to bring into uh mention that, you know, a woman past her flower is just like a piece of fruit. It's just like a piece of fruit. You know, because somebody say, okay, well, damn, you know, she's not a woman yet, right? Today, she's not a woman. She's not a, a, a woman that can actually do womanly things. But I hit you with this, the most high is not of this world. The most high set us up, okay, in this earth to do according to his will and his purpose in this life. So... A woman is like a piece of fruit. Here you are, you plant an apple tree, right? I go to my apple tree and I'm looking at my apple tree. I'm looking for apples to take off and I'm seeing apples. I see one apple and I say, uh, 
nah, the apple need a little bit more. It's too uh, green. You know, it's not red enough. All right, I look at this other apple. Uh, same thing. I leave it on. Then I look at one other apple and I go, oh, yeah, that apple. Right. Let me take that one. Mm, and they eat it. That apple has become edible because why? It has met its prime. It's in its state of what? Giving me food. Being food for me. So how much more as a woman? Once a woman, once a girl become a woman because she starts to receive her period, that woman can now bear seed. Her body, her organs and the inside of her are ready to take upon a man's seed and can bring forth life. That's the way of the Lord. Okay? That is the way of the Lord. That's how the Lord designed it. Now, according to today, would you go and mess with a 12, 13, 14 year old and you 25 years old? Hell no, because you will get locked up. And then you have to look at the fact of why we today are so smaller and less of stature than we were back then. First off is because of sin. Number two is because of Esau, Edom. OK, Esau, Edom ruling this world. How come when you go to different countries, there's different countries that allow um, a, that allow women to be taken at different ages? Who said, um, because I was watching Pastor Gabar's page and he mentioned about Tozariot and he showed it, how he said, um, what's the word he used? Uh, underage. What's underage? Underage for a woman is a woman that is uh not over her flower. So today, underage is 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 determined by a number that Esau put up. All right, which he said by 18. If you mess with a woman that's under 18, I believe that's rape or something like that. Forgot what they use it, you go to jail, you get locked up. But that's Esau. If the Lord said, uh she's She's un if the Lord said that she's over the age when she receives her period, then who would to say against that? But of course, I'm not advocating, you know, because you guys like to play upon emotions. You want to play upon emotions and say, oh, you like little girls, too. No, it ain't that. Let's just state facts. We're talking Bible. OK, we're talking ancient times and customs. We're talking the ways of the Lord. The Lord said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Okay? When you read the scriptures, let's get it right. The scriptures say what it say. You feel how you feel. All right? But the scriptures say what it say. Understand what is written. It's not we supposed to speak the truth. You know? So, I'm not advocating for men to go out there and deal with young women. You better not do that fucking shit. Okay? Okay? And be stupid because that's stupid to go and do that. And you don't need to do that. Okay? But the Bible and the customs and the ways back then, it was like that. And you can't change that, Tuzariat. All right? Or anybody in like minded as Tuzariat that feels some type of way. You know, keep calling us rapists and this and that. That's slander, man. That's slander. You know, because none of us. There is no evidence of none of us doing such a thing. And we will not do such a thing. But you got to state the truth and where the truth relies, which is the Bible, man. You know, now you can get mad with the Bible and diss the whole Bible. You can say F the most high like little Boosie did, you know, all over just wanting to eat some goddamn pork or whatever the foul food it was. You know, that's on you. That's on you. But the scriptures say what it say. All right. So, you know, like I said, I wasn't going to keep it that long. I just wanted to say that I was watching this lesson and I was getting, um, you know, uh, getting in the spirit, watching a possible bar lesson. I watched about 30 minutes of it. And then the person that was with me watching it, well, listening to it, you know, we just started discussing it. man. So I said, let's let me read it. Let's read it and go into it and uh, discuss it and look up the word flower, you know. Because it's common sense, man. It's common sense. It's not a hard thing to understand. Let me read it again. 1 Corinthians 7 and 36. Because if it don't mean this, then you tell me what it means. You break the scripture down. 
And I guarantee you, you're going to you're going to lie on the scripture, man. You're not going to break it down right. This is plain, man. It says it's as plain as day. It says, but if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his version. Why Paul saying this? Because you had men at the time that were older in age and were probably in fear or thinking that they were sinning by dealing with a woman that was young at the age of 12, 13, and 14, 15 years old, you know? So Paul said, if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely, unbeautiful toward his virgin, because he might be with her, but he'd be like, nah, I ain't going to do nothing with you yet. I don't want to, you know, I don't want them nobody saying nothing about me. I ain't trying to get the most out of take me out, you know? He said, if she passed the flower of her age, what is the flower? What is the flower? What is the flower? What is the flower? What is it? And need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not, let them marry. Okay? I'm sorry. I just want to... uh. I'm not sorry, but I just want to, you know, I'm passionate. I just want to get into this word again. Flower. Strong's G 5230. Huperakmas. Huperakmas. It says beyond the bloom or prime of life. What is the prime of life for a woman? Okay. First off, you got a young girl and then she goes into her young, her young adulthood. Okay. Because... You know, now she's having a flower. That is the prime. Once a woman go and start having, um, once a woman start having her period, her moon every month, she are now living in her prime. This is why also when you get to that age, when a woman doesn't have her period anymore, that means her eggs are not working anymore inside of her or not reproducing. Right. If, if how that go, I just know that. When you when a woman is up to age and um she can't she don't get her period no more, that's because this the shit the organs of her bodies are not functioning right the right way. Her eggs are not properly being reproduced the right way. So she knows that she's not able to have a baby. So the prime of a woman's life is her when she enters uh when she starts to have her moon every month. Until she can't have it anymore. That makes me think also of the scripture where Sarah laughed at the angels. Um, because the angel uh, was speaking on how she was going to bear seed the next following season around that time. And um, she was going to bear seed of Isaac. Okay. Basically, yeah, it was, it was Abraham. All right. Uh, the angel was talking to Abraham and she overheard Abraham and the angel speaking and she laughed because she believed that she couldn't bear no seed. All right. Because she was stricken in age. She was out of her prime. So it says beyond the bloom or prime of life, overripe, plump and ripe. That's that makes me think of a fruit. Whenever there's fruit on a tree, it don't got to be an apple tree. You look at it. You examine it and you go, all right, it's not ready just yet, but it will be. You look at another one, not just yet, but it will be. Then you look at the third one, you go, all right, that tomato right there, that one right there. Let me get that one right now before some, some fucking squirrel, raccoon or something come by and eat it. That's the same analogy, uh, metaphorically speaking, as you put a woman as the fruit. It's the same thing because that, that fruit, that tomato that is ready... And you could have took it. If you don't take it, it's possible a squirrel, a rotin could come by and nibble and take and defile that tomato, man. It's the same thing. Same thing, man. It's This is not hard at all, man. It's just guys being straight up wicked. Guys are being emotional. Guys don't want to see it. Or you just haters of GMS, man. You know, you slander, you lie, and the most high is going to kill you, man. Straight up, man. Because you're not being honest with yourself. It's the same thing, man. Now, it says, um, 
and so in greater danger of defilement. Yeah, because with that fruit, that squirrel could come take it, man. Then you come back out there. Oh, man. Dang. I should have just took that damn tomato when I knew I should have, man. God damn. These fucking root. Hey, see? Same thing as the analogy of using it for a woman, man. The flower. When she's over that flower. Now, this is not advocating men to go out there and chase after young women. You should not do that. You better not. Okay? But the scripture stands, man. This is how it was. Man, yo, of a virgin, past the flower of one's age. More, man. That's it, man. You know, I hope this lesson was edifying. Just wanted to uh, jump right in and uh, just go over this because it's simple, man. You ain't got to go too many scriptures. This is simple, man. You know, I'm just being honest, man, and uh, just having a little bit of passion and spirit of the Lord. So, you know, I hope this was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai, Basham Rakakwadash, Shalom to the elect, Shalom.